Welcome to Fazakali, Liverpool for the biggest day in the baseball calendar when Wales meet England for the Gladstone Rose Bowl trophy. This is the 60th meeting between the two countries with Wales ahead by 24 victories. But this is an unpredictable game and though Wales won by an innings last year, they are only slight favourites today. England have three new faces in Sean Webb, Stan Hicklin and Barry Hughes who joins his brother Carl in the team. John Clark is skipper for the first time and brother Dave is the backstop. Some old faces like Neil Rice and John Jervis are gone but Bobby Davin wins his 21st cap and Jeff Lynch is 16th while big hitter Steve Henney is at number 6. The Welsh team have four new caps in Hayden Mould, Paul Hurley, Glyn Owen and Mike Clark and are led for the second time by Alan Harrison of the Alexandra Newport Club. Mike Clark is the interesting choice as he's the first cap from the Ninian Spurs Club and one of the oldest internationals ever. John Smith and Romney will be equal in the late Tommy Dennings record of 12 caps but it will be Paul Gardner who heads the Welsh bowling attack. The bowler is so important in baseball and Hicklin and Lynch of England and Gardner and Smith are all capable of winning the game single-handed. It may rest with new caps however, especially Clark for Wales and Hicklin for England. Here's a key man today, referee Andy Ellard, who's a very popular man off the field and the first Irishman to referee an international. He's the vice chairman of the English Baseball Association and this is his first international. And it's England to bat, having been put in by Wales. And the first man to the pegs will be Dennis Barber of the Brexside Club. The Welsh bowler being Paul Gardner from Alexandra in Newport. First ball was clearly a bad ball from Gardner. Way behind the batsman. There he is, the big fellow, bowled so well for Wales last season. And with the early rain having gone, it's a very nice looking scene as Gardner bowls almost a good ball but uh, higher than the chin in fact referee Andy Ellard there ruling that that wasn't a, a good and that obviously was a bad ball again from Gardner so Paul Gardner's got to get into the groove and that was uh, a real bad one and that's two extras on to the English total. England two for naught already. Two bad balls, one extra. Dennis Barber waiting. Oh, that really was a wild ball from Paul Gardner. An unusual start from him. And Dennis Barber scoring runs not for himself, but for the team by waiting for these extras. So here's the man who hasn't scored yet in an international, Dennis Barber. And a third extra. As Gardner bowling again off the pegs the three and a half feet in fact there's a good ball from Gardner it's seen but called uh, again a bad by referee Ellard so that's seven bad balls from Paul Gardner to start Dennis Barber from Brexide rugby league player and he hits that one very firmly that's his first runs in international baseball and his second cap and Dennis Barber getting away John Smith fielding and one run to Dennis Barber with the three extras making it four already. Here's the man with more caps than anyone ever in international baseball. It's Bobby Davin hitting strongly past first base. Very well swooped on there by the Welsh fielder, which was Glyn Owen, the new cap from Kyra, who's had his hair cut since I saw him last. So England with a reasonable start, as good as they could have hoped. And Gary Gall, the third batsman, getting an unplayable ball and called a bad by referee Ellard. Gary Gall from Brexide, whose father and his grandfather played for England. Another extra to the total. Well, Paul Gardner hasn't made the start that he made last season at Newport. But I'm sure he will find his form. He's really a bit wild at the moment. Paul Gardner not quite settling down here at Liverpool. And Gary Gall get in what almost seemed a good ball, but in fact was ruled just a bit too high by referee Allard. Well, Paul Gardner is certainly finding it hard to get the good ball in and Gary Gall receiving and being bowled, clean ball, that's the first man out. 
Good ball that time from Gardner. The first real good that he's bowled. Straight down the middle. Gary Gold took a swing at it and was clean bowled. So that gives a bit of heart to Paul Gardner and to Wales. And England, eight for one. John Clark, the English skipper. Very poor record, almost struck out, was he? No, he hit the ball, it came off the bat, and he gets one run for it. And that was really a nervous time for John Clark because he's had six ducks in eight innings for England so far. And Andy Ellard indicating, and in fact, it came off John Clark's forearm there. Carl Hughes receiving. Well, that was given as a good ball from referee Ellard. Gardner just getting it right at the moment. Slow beginning for him, and now it's Carl Hughes facing. Very bad ball, and the English fielders, the English batsmen, can get around the bases quite easily. So here's Carl Hughes, who's the youngest winner of the EBA trophy for the player of the year in England. But another bad ball and an extra. Carl Hughes receiving, whose brother Barry is in the team, is a technician in a Liverpool hospital. Good batsman. Good shot. That is the best shot of the inning so far. That's four runs, no doubt about it, to Carl Hughes. And that's very well received by the English supporters. That's a fine hit by Carl Hughes. Four runs for England's number five, Carl Hughes of Willowbank. That's the way that he started in baseball in 1982. Steve Henney, the big hitter for England. Hitting out, this could be a catch. Glyn Owen, no, it's very well taken by Chris Duffin, the other kind of player. Well, that hung in the air a bit, and they know that Steve Henney likes to hit straight, and I think he tried to, but he mishit there, and it was Chris Duffin of Kyra taking the catch. Paul Gardner getting his second man out there after a tentative start, and uh, now we've got the new cap, Sean Webb of St. Mike Margaret's. Good ball straight away. Now well, that's unnerving for a, a young newcomer. Sean Webb, 20 years of age tomorrow, in fact. Will this be a good birthday present for him? Webb is clean bowled! Clean bowled by Paul Gardner. The backstop really is quick, Ivor Hughes, and uh, Webb could have attempted first base, but I don't think he would have ever got there. Sean Webb, the English number seven. The combination of Newport's Paul Gardner and this man, Ivor Hughes, from Cardiff's Land Rumney Club. Now it's another new cap, Barry Hughes, brother of Carl Hughes. Just a bad ball. Wales getting back into this game. With Barry Hughes hitting confidently. Oh, it's just like his brother. He's following his brother there. Same shot. Four runs to the newcomer. Barry Hughes, 18 years of age, the youngest man in the English side, and what a good start in international baseball. And the sport in the applauded as you see by the backstop, Ivor Hughes as he went past. Barry Hughes. England 18 for three. It's about even Stephen at the moment. And the tall boy here is Stan Hickland, the English bowler, and a new cap. Here's the man that uh, English hopes really are on today, Stan Hickland, 21-year-old carpenter. And being struck by the ball, but it was a bad ball, clearly. Extra given by referee Ellard. Paul Gardner taking his time, bowling to Stan Hicklin, and he missed that one and is out on first base, touched out by Hayden Mould, the new cap from Grange Albion of Cardiff. Hicklin didn't hit it, Ivor Hughes too quick with the throw, so it's not a good debut for Hicklin with the bat anyway. Hayden Mould, the new cap, who's lost a couple stone in weight for Wales on first base, good first base he is as well. England 19 for four. 
and Wales just edging in front really number 10 in the first round is Dave Clark the English backstop batted well last year receives a bad ball Now Paul Gardner may well afford that a few of these were good so they've been called bad but here he goes to Dave Clark and that was, certainly was a bad ball outside the pegs 36 inches across the batting crease there there you see the free pegs the right hand one towed by the batsman Dave Clark Clark's oh he's well beaten by that Hughes takes his time to Hayden Mould at first base and that's out and a duck for Dave Clark never got hold of that at all and the Hughes mold combination there put him back for no score. There's Ivor Hughes, the Welsh backstop. England 20 for five. What a bad first round it's been for them. A couple good shots, but Wales on top now. Here's the man who might change it, the number 11 in the English side, Geoffrey Lynch. Getting a low ball from Paul Gardner. I know it was a judge to bad, it wasn't too bad a ball, in fact. Jeff Lynch receiving, and well, that really was a big one for Wales. Jeff Lynch was just off, I think it was a bad ball. He reached for it, overstretched, and Ivor Hughes was too quick for him. Good bowling by Paul Gardner. And that's the end of the first round, in fact, of England. And it's been a little bit of a disaster towards the end there. 20 for 6 for England now, a hat-trick for Paul Gardner and success for Wales. First man in the second round, Dennis Barber. Baron Ball. Gardner to the Rugby League and Rugby Union player. And Colin Extra, in fact. Dennis Barber, 28 years of age from Brexside. Paul Gardner to him. Oh, he was tempted. He was tempted. And there were thoughts from the Welsh that he might have played a shot, but I don't think he did. Well, here's Dennis Barber again. Edging. Late shot, almost what you call a late cut, almost the throw in from Wales but it's to two base and Dennis Barber settles for one run taking him to two there's a nice uh, shot of Paul Gardner and the Welsh give Alan Harrison the closest to him as Bobby Davin receives hits strongly past Harrison that's a good shot Paul Hurley's in the outfield he's a brilliant thrower of a ball Paul Hurley playing a bit of soccer with it Bobby Davin going for free and realizing that Hurley can certainly get that ball in good fielding by Wales John Smith, the number two, on two base there, and the English number two, Bobby Davin. Good throw by Paul Hurley. And as John Clark, the England captain, is at the pegs for the second time, England at 25 for six. What can Clark do to stop this? Bad ball. And the English base runners can get round, taking Dennis Barber home. So Paul Gardner again to Clark. Clark hits, that's a good shot, as good a shot as I've ever seen John Clark play in international matches. John Smith coming after it. John Clark on his way round for three. And good throw by Smith to underhand for a change. But John Clark settles for three. And he'll be well pleased with that. Hoping to lead a little bit of a revival for England, having lost those six men in the first round. Carl Hughes, cool customer, good young bat, but he's out this time, Ivor Hughes in fact, very quick, though Gardner clean bowled him in fact, Hughes was very quick to touch him out there, and that's the end of a good uh, boy, Carl Hughes, out for four runs. England 29 for seven, deep in trouble. Well, here's some of the Welsh support, I look a bit thirsty, and it's from the Ninian Spurs club, I think. One man! Gardner, whose nickname is Trigger, 
His father was an international, of course, and he bowls another one. England are really in trouble. That's another Hughes gone. Barry Hughes. Clean bowl by Paul Gardner. And England really are in a bit of a mess. England 29 for 8. This really is one of their worst starts in Liverpool for quite some time. Now, as Paul Gardner prepares to bowl to Barber, John Smith's gone over to the leg side. He's looking for the touchdown by Barber. Just a little touch, but in fact, he fools them all. We've got good fielding by Hayden Mould on first base and brilliantly out. Now, that was superb fielding by Hayden Mould and Paul Gardner, the bowler. What a combination. The shot from Dennis Barber was brilliantly fielded by Hayden Mould diving to his left, and he quickly got it back to Gardner, who reversed the base position, and Gardner got there to touch out Dennis Barber. Here's the man Bobby Davin, who's a production manager of a plastic company, and one of the last two Englishmen home. Gardner to Davin, Davin strikes high in the air, but he's got away with it, Alan Harrison, the Welsh captain, fields, and Davin picks up two very important runs for England at this stage so here's the man who's bowled so well what a good start for him his best one at Liverpool Gardner de Clark bad ball now here's the problem John Clark the captain his last man home Bobby Davin's on free base he's got to score and he's got to get Davin home Clark hits strongly gets Davin home all right oh good field in there by Chris Duffin for on a beautiful throw and out goes Clark out does he two runs he just he just managed to beat Gardner as the judge to have beat him and I think he did John Clark just getting two runs takes him to top score of six well uh, John Clark just make it two base what a throw by Chris Duffin and Paul Gardner almost catching him out Bobby Davin who's got five so far trying to get the last man round it's a good shot in a deep Paul Hurley is coming round for it for Wales. It'll take Davin to two. How good is the Hurley throw? Here it comes. Davin on his way to three. Harrison there. Good throw. Good running by Bobby Davin, though. One of the oldest of the English players, and that was a well-run three. Very experienced player, this fellow. Most capped of either side. So there's a bowling change for Wales, and it's John Smith replacing Paul Gardner. Gardner's figures 9 for 38. One very, very experienced player replacing another. Clark has made a bit of a mess of that one. Will Ivor Hughes? No, he's just fumbled it. How unusual. One <laughs> Clark putting his hand over his head, thinking he'd get the ball in the back of the head. But that's just a rare sight of Ivor Hughes fumbling it behind the batting crease. England 39 for 9, hanging on, just surviving their last two men. England, certainly it's a more respectable score at the moment. And here's one of the men to thank for it, Bobby Davin, who's made eight so far. And they're all out! That's the end of it! Clean bold and John Clark can't get round. Poor Bobby Davin just stands there. How did I do that? But there it is. England all out. 39. So here we go with the first innings for Wales, and it's the captain, Alan Harrison, facing this young man, Stan Hicklin. First ball was a bit too high, just over the chin. And here's the 21 year old carpenter from Liverpool. Second ball at Stan Hicklin's bowled in international baseball to captain Alan Harrison. Extra! Getting too high, well left, and the first run for Wales with an extra. Hicklin to Harrison. Oh, it hit his bat and was given a good, in fact, I thought it was one horrible moment the referee had given him out, but uh, in fact, he didn't play a stroke. One good, brother. Alan Harrison reminded by the referees had one good it's Hicklin to Harrison and he hits well past the first base Bobby Davin good start by the skipper going on to two in fact picking up two good runs very sound reliable international baseballer Alan Harrison very calm cool player
John Smith, who's got all the shots and uh, in very good form this season. Hickland to Smith, he hits this powerfully. Jeff Lynch coming for it. It's beaten Jeff slightly. John's on his way to two. And he'll be satisfied with that. Gave it a bit of air, but another fine shot from John Smith. Jeff Stevens facing, hitting well. Up comes Jeff Lynch to cut off the second run, but it's a single to Jeff Stevens. And that's his 14th run. run in six innings for Wales. So Hickland to the Carl Miver Hughes. Uh, that really was way off. No need to play that. Five, five extras already for Wales. Hughes shaping for the leg shot. And he plays it. Oh, what a brilliant catch! What a brilliant catch! Dennis Barber. That was fantastic. The batsman Ivor Hughes applauding. That was an outstanding catch by Dennis Barber of England. Really was. He hit it straight at him, admittedly, but uh, wonderfully held. Barber, quick as a flash, looking to see if Jeff Stevens was going home. But uh, he would have got two men if he'd got Stevens as well. First man out, and Wales 10 for one. Is uh, Hayden Mould, fine base player for Wales. First cap, he's out for a duck, I'm afraid. It gets a little bit harder in internationals, and the big hitting Hayden Mould has gone for a duck, which is a great shame for Wales, but uh, a triumph for Stan Hicklin, also in his first appearance. Stan Hicklin working up pace, nicely touched down. Tony Murphy gets the run, gets Jeff Stevens home as well. He'll settle for that one. It's the way to start the round for Tony Murphy. Hickland to Paul Hurley. I thought he played a stroke then. It was very close. And tapped the base, says John Clark. And out. Yes, he did. That's an amazing one. But I think the referee was right. I thought Paul Hurley played a shot. He says no. And he is given out on his first appearance without moving off the peg. Sensible baseball by Bobby Davin and John Clark and Hurley given out for having played a shot and not moved off the pegs. Based at one. Well, haven't seen that happen for a long time. And Wales 11 for three and it's a repeat of the English innings almost now. Here's an important new cap for the Ninian Spurs Club of Cardiff. They've never had one. Mike Clark has played for many years, started with Fair Oak as did Glyn Owen. But he's a good sound player, Mike Clark. Extra! And that's a bad ball to him, an extra. On comes Tony Murphy. Mike Clark is a man who I don't think will suffer too badly from nerves on his debut. One bad! And another bad. So Hickland to Big Mike Clark, the bearded Indian Spurs player, given a good. Here's an anxious looking uh, Welsh supporters. John Day at the back, a well known referee, and an extra as Hickland bowls to Clark. by Clark, receive it again, had one good, plays it down, he's okay, he's away to his first international run, and his fans in the crowd love that one. There they are at the back. One run to Mike Clark, he must have waited quite a few years for that one. Stan Hickland, quite quick at times, Paul Gardner just got it away, wasn't sure, neither was the backstop, but Gardner's on his way to two at sensible baseball because he didn't settle for one, he went on to two runs and uh, only experienced player could probably have got to there. Glyn Owen very fast indeed. He's hit it high, he's got away with it, or has he? There's a dive from the English no Webb, the back long stop, can't get it. And young Owen gets two, two runs on his debut. Two runs! Still, that's a nice start. And he'll be very happy about that, I'm sure he will. Laughing about it. Bit of luck I think he had with his shot, but 
There we are. Here's his teammate, club mate, Chris Duffin. This is the end of the Welsh first round as Chris Duffin, the last man in the batting order. Receives a bad ball. Chris Duffin of Cairo. Another bad and an extra again. Well, Stan Hicklin with a bit of pace at times and swerving the ball certainly. One bad. But swerving it away from the backstop that time. Here's a young man, Chris Duffin, whose father, Dick, was travelling up by train this morning to see him, and I hope he's here to see his son play for his second cap. Chris Duffin hits it down, that's out, I think, if Hickland gives it to Davin, it is. The wrong place to put it, in the diamond, straight to the bowler. And young Hickland gets uh, Duffin out there on first base. So Chris Duffin walking off at the end of the first round for Wales. And at the end of the first round, Wales are 20 for four. Wales begin the second round with Skip Allen Harrison. Strikes it again away well. What a good player he is on these occasions. Never seems to be ruffled. Always plays the sensible shots. One run! Picks himself up. Another run. Beautiful stance of John Smith. And he plays it away, he does that so superbly well, making the ball do the work there. And John Smith is on his way, certainly for three. He's thinking about a fourth, but he takes three runs. And in fact, he's going for the fourth, this could be out on four. No, he's... Four runs! He's got there, yes, referee run on the... Right there to make the decision, and a well-picked up fourth run by John Smith. Referee held position well there for that one. Jeff Stevens having a look round. Tony Murphy behind him next in, but it's the local government officer of the side, Jeffrey Stevens. One man! No, why Jeff does that? He turns aside occasionally, saying he won't take the first good, but in fact it was a bad ball. Hickland to Stevens. Stevens hits down powerfully, beats John Clark. No, good stop. Good stop by John Clark and. Uh, well recovered by the English field, by Carl Hughes. There's a captain who made a, a very good stop there. I didn't think he'd quite get it to his right. Wales 26 for four. Recovering quite well. A wild ball from Hicklin. Jeff Stevens goes round two base, round three base, and he should get home. Stan Hicklin has bowled ten extras. One of the quietest players, Tony Murphy, and a very good club player. One ball! Hicklin just can't get it right at the moment. Hicklin with the pace, but not quite the control. Tony Murphy hitting down, good shot. Nobody on two base, so Carl Hughes has got to come for it. Tony Murphy settles for two. Sensible run in. Two runs! It's the sort of baseball that Tony Murphy plays. Quite calm player. And here's uh, an early bowling change for England. And I think it's probably a justified one. It's Jeff Lynch, the veteran almost of the English side. 16th cap today. Jeff Lynch is the man that's done so well in the past. Good ball straight away. It's the way to start. Now here's Mike Clark, one run so far. Can really hit the ball at times, this fella. Lynch to Clark. He edges it. Good shot. Beat the close field. Sean Webb with beautiful throw. Down to two base. Mike Clark has settled for one run. He's not coming to two. There he is. That'll do me, he said. 
Lynch to Gardner, Gardner pushes it away, good one. Going to Steve Henney, almost the first time he's touched it. Good throw by Steve Henney, but Paul Gardner picked up that second run again. Very smart running, he might be a big fella, but he can get around the bases okay. Wales 33 for four, edging closer to England. Well, the interesting thing is that Owen has never met Lynch before. It's a different type of bowler. Oh, he's hit it well. He's going to go for a catch, though. He's out. Very well caught. Very well caught by Stan Hicklin. Owen met it well. He hit the ball very well. But Stan Hicklin, the first bowler, number nine, took a straightforward catch, really. And Owen will have to try better in the second time. They don't seem to come calmer in the Welsh team than Skipper Harrison. Second time a skipper. And he hits that most beautifully. That was really well struck. I think that was the best Welsh shot so far. He nearly fell over in his excitement. But he should get a fourth run. Here's the throw. It's a good one. But Alan Harrison's home for four runs. Now that's really good stuff. Really good stuff from the Welsh captain. Alan Harrison on seven. Wales 38 for five, just one run behind England at the moment. John Smith versus Jeff Lynch, they've met so many times. Smith hits hard, what a good catch! Bobby Davin on one base, just to his left, but very agile. For a man who's been around a long time, so well hit by John Smith, but a fine catch by Bobby Davin on first base. Gardner strikes at that. Gets it away, it's Goo gone through the hoardings and young Sean Webb's in a bit of trouble and I think Paul Gardner will pick four up for that. It was a good experience uh, shot by Gardner who showed he's no mean batsman today and he picks up four runs for that. Yes. Well, did it come off his arm or did it come off the bat? Bit of both, I think. Wales 53 for six and uh, there's certainly a little stand for Wales going on as Jeff Lynch bowls to Mike Clark. Lynch to Mike Clark, swinging the bat around. Not tempted, good ball. Good ball, though. Here's a big test for Mike Clark. As he receives from Lynch, strikes it down well. That's a good shot. And he's really uh, proven his worth, Mike Clark. Only four runs, but they're four useful runs. Playing very cleverly. Gardner. Oh, what a beautiful shot. The longest, hardest shot I think I've ever seen Paul Gardner hit. It's four runs by a long, long way. In fact, it could be eight or even 12. But you're not allowed those, only four. And Port Gardner trots around. That really was the most superb shot. One of the best he's ever hit, I think. Four runs! Four runs, and there's it. A lone English fielder, a long, long way out. Even if he threw it, he could never get it back to the diamond. There's someone going out to meet him, but uh, really, he's almost lost. Such a long way away. What a marvellous shot by Paul Gardner. Well, there's a few there who are pretty happy about that shot, I would have thought. Jeff Steen is probably the tallest man on either side. Ah, oh, he's out this time. Claimed for a catch off the bat. I'm not sure whether he got it. Uh, Stevens went a long way. Jo Dave Clark, the backstop, may have just picked a nick up there. But certainly Jeff Stevens was very, very annoyed with himself. And he was out for five. So at last, Wales lost a seventh, and the man England wanted, 62 for seven, Wales now. Hicklin to Tony Murphy from the St Michael's Club in Newport, who's gone this time, and he goes for five. Second time that Stan Hicklin's done that, the ball being hit at him. And uh, he ran across to the base man, and indeed, as it so often happens, Wales uh, lose another one quickly. One goes, the other one goes quite soon afterwards, and Wales 
a 62 for 8. There's Mike Clark to stop the rot for a moment. England must feel they know Clark's shots by now. They pulled a few fielders in close. I think he's probably good enough to defy them, though. Oh, he's not! He's out! Mike Clark, his first mistake in the game. Oh, Missed the ball, did the right thing. He ran to first base and he got his skipper home. And that's clever stuff, but he's out, unfortunately. A hat-trick for Hicklin. Clark out for a well-struck four runs. Alan Harrison pulls it. Jeff Lynch catches him beautifully. Can Gardner get home? Here's the race for home. Oh, it was close. Gardner, I thought, got there. He did. He got there. Well run, Paul. And uh, Alan Harrison was out caught by Lynch, but Gardner will get another go. So, well, 64 for 10. Last man. Paul Gardner of the Alexandra Club. He's hit two fours already. He's made 14 runs. He's the highest scorer in the match so far. And he hits this one well, and he may well get another two at least before Steve Henney stops it. One for Gardner, on his way for two. It's a photo finish, no, he's got the two. Oh, he didn't realize Dave Clark had fumbled. Two runs and out, 16 to Gardner. Fine display from Paul. And the Welsh innings closed at 66. So the England second innings beginning, Paul Gardner opening the bowling for Wales, 9 for 38 the first innings, and it's Dennis Barber receiving. And very near a good, but the judge the bad by referee Andy Ellard, who's done very well in his first international. Gardner again to Dennis Barber, ooh that was tempting. Ruled a bad ball and an extra. Here's the referee, Gardner to Barber, Babu, just a reflex action, and he just got it away, and in fact that ball has really shot away, Paul Hurley fields, and Dennis Barber takes two runs. And he'd be quite pleased to have got away with that, that wasn't uh, a very easy ball to play at all. Here's Bobby Davin, highest score back in 1970, was 17. That was a very good shot, it was a difficult ball to play, he took it ever so well by his head and uh, he's got three, where Paul Hurley's throw beat him to four, I doubt it, it's a good throw though, but uh, no, Davin is there, now that's good runs for England, four by Bobby Davin, tall young bowler Stan Hicklin, well in number nine for England. John Smith to Hickland. Oh, he's out. That's the first man gone. He overreached. Oh, May have been just slightly a bad ball, but Hughes got it away to Hayden Bowl, the first base, and out goes Stan Hickland, who's really in for his bowling more than his batting because he hasn't scored today. That's the first one for Wales, and England 25 for one in the second inning. Still two behind. Backstop Dave Clark is receiving the rain just slightly easing Dave Clark is out if Hughes can get it to mould he has oh, out goes Dave Clark missed it just a little fumble by Hughes but the ball was there thrown to Hayden Mould and David Clark is out John Smith in the groove as they say and two men out well the rain's still around it's John Smith to Dennis Barber Oh, that was a uh, played, I think, off the bat. Could he go? He's out on first base. He played it down, I think, onto the backstop's feet. And Dennis Barber has gone for two in the second innings. And he's not sure what happened, I don't think. So that makes the scores level. England having lost three for 27 in the second innings. So Gary Gall receiving, likes the leg shot. Gone for the off, missed it, he walks off because the bases, as they say, are loaded because Bobby Davin was at one base and Gary Gall couldn't have made it. And he did the only thing he could do, he walked off and was out. England 29 for four, lead only by two runs. Smith to Clark, he's out bold. The Hughes showed the mould, tried to make it to base, but couldn't. And out goes Skipper John Clark for two. Well, there we are. 
Well, we think the re weather's coming from there with uh, really a funny look, almost to a rainbow over Liverpool at the moment. So Carl Hughes, who likes the leg shot, Wales think he's going to make it off. That's two goods and out, I think. It is. It's two goods and out. Carl Hughes doesn't move. He says the ball was outside the peg, but honestly, I think it was two goods and out. And I think the referee was right. And poor young Hughes just throws. And he's out. Two good balls and out. Where England are 30 for six and deep in trouble, leading by just three runs. Sean Webb receiving. Oh, he took a bad ball and he's out because the bases are loaded and Henny's on one base, Davin's on two. The ball went to three, exactly the wrong place to hit it. And he couldn't move, so Webb walked off. They're 33 for seven, England, just six on and four men left. Hughes kneeling down there. I've seen him do that quite often. Uh, Harrison picking up the beautiful throw by Alan Harrison. What a magnificent throw. And out went Jeff Lynch. It really didn't look on for one moment. But Harrison on free base sped that ball across to Hayden Mould on first base. There he is. That was a magnificent throw and as good a throw as I've ever seen Alan Harrison make, I think. So... Good all-rounder Jeff Lynch, but he goes for two. Three men left. Ivor Hughes crouches, Bobby Davin crouches, John Smith bowls. Could be out if Smith can get the throw to Mould. He's out on one. Good play by bowler and baseman. And Bobby Davin just couldn't make it. Out for six. England 44 for nine. Lead by 17. Barry Hughes with just Henny on first base. He strikes it. England are going to be out. All out. He couldn't even get to first base and he just about missed the ball. He just got a faint touch, but uh, really a mess for England. And the second innings closing. That completes the England second innings. All out 45. Wales need 19 to win in the last innings. And Alan Harrison, the captain, begins. Stan Hicklin bowling to Alan Harrison. Bad ball. Now, Wales really could do it on extras here. Because young Hickland's been a bit wild. It's Hickland to Harrison again. And it's the first extra in the first run for Wales. Hickland to Harrison. Looks, looked pretty good, actually. <laughs> Alan Harrison and the referee both tell him it's a bad. Been a good referee today, Andy Allard. Well, again, it looks pretty reasonable, but the second extra for Wales. So here's the calm, quiet captain who's had a good game. Harrison. Five bad balls from Stan Hicklin. Wales to Alan Howard. Extra! Well, a bad start by England. Three extras. Ready. Alan Harrison, who won his first cap when he was playing for Newport Civil Service, then he transferred to Alexandra. Hickland to Harrison. Good shot. Is it a man? No, there's not. That's a very good shot by Alan Harrison. How many can he get for it? Certainly three. I don't think John Clark will make it. It's four to Harrison. Seven to the Welsh total. Four runs, three extras. And Wales well on their way. I don't think he'll have to bat again in this match. Seven for North Wales. Need just 12 to win. Is Ivor Hughes, who's level on 119 runs with the late Jackie Thompson in third place for Wales. So one run would see him clear third for Wales all time. And that's his run. In fact, it could be four runs. It, the bounce took it over little Barry Hughes. Ivor Hughes goes into third place of all time Welsh scorers. Past Jackie Thompson. And he's 123, that makes him. Which is just three runs behind the late Carl Gray of Newport. With John Smith the leader. So the only thing left really for the Welsh players now are players like Hayden Mould, the new cap from Grange Albion. Can he score a run in international baseball? 
He's hit it high and hard, and yes, he can. That'll do him. He's played well on one base. He didn't score in the first innings, but that's two runs he'll be proud of. Two runs! So Hickland to Murphy, three to get. Murphy strikes, gets it away over John Clark. Will certainly get one. Will he try for two? No, he won't. One run! No, he won't. So Tony Murphy settles for one. I'm sure it's his last run of the match. Wales only need two runs to win. They're 17 without loss. Can Paul Hurley make his first run for Wales? He's hit it hard. He's got his first run. It's the winning run. Paul Hurley of Newport has hit the winning run for Wales. He goes to one. He goes to two. He goes to three. He's triumphant. He goes to four. Wales have won with 11 holding, in fact, because no one is out. The players shake hands. And Paul Hurley can certainly go home happy. There's the captain, Alan Harrison of Wales. What a fine day it was for him, and a good Welsh victory. So Wales with 22 for naught, win by 11 men holding. So as the successful captain, Alan Harrison, receives the Gladstone Rose Bowl trophy from English chairman John Jervis, from us all at Fazakali, it's goodbye.